Hey, it's Ashley. And Evan. <laughs> I was waiting for your Evan. <laughs> okay. We just did an interview right here at the Zach Sang show and we had the best it. time. We had the best time. We got deep. We talked about a little bit of everything. New music, our new song, life. Life. Yeah. Yeah. So check it out. Phases. <laughs> Let's do this. Zach Sang show. Hello, beautiful human. We have with us Dan, as hey. usual. <laughs> but we welcome to the studio once again Ashley Simpson and Evan Roth. All right. Yeah. But this time, we Ed- got pink hair twins, too. That's it. We have a lot of pink <laughs> hair in the studio flowing right now. It's, there's, it's a thing now, I think, right now. Yeah. What was, what was it for you? Why'd you want to go pink? Um, I, uh, well, I hadn't really thought about it. And uh, actually, somebody that was working on her hair. Mm-hmm. Um, was saying that he's like, yo, I got this big pastel. Yeah. It would look really cool. And I was like, yeah, well, let's try it. It looks pretty new. I mean, I've, I, 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 I kind of, I don't really, I could try anything. I, I don't like really mind. When I, when I was pregnant with Jagger, you had every hair color possible. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, As I was getting big, he had every, he was practicing every hair color. No, you know, I got the, that, no, I, that, I, I got the hair color right before we had Jagger. And then I kind of kept the blonde hair yeah. for a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I, I made a mistake and I did a show called Wicked City with the blonde hair, which I didn't realize that meant that I was literally going to have to get my hair colored every like uh, four days because my hair's so short. Yeah. <laughs> it had to be continuity. It was hair ridiculous. problems, guys. I've had every hair color under the sun, too. So. <laughs> but when you dye it too much, it gets unhealthy. Right. That's- yeah, but it's such short hair, you just cut up the unhealthy stuff off. Yeah, um, yeah that's a, a, a knock on wood, it keeps growing back. Yeah. <laughs> Let's hope so. <laughs> but, but the pink really does look good. It really, y- your skin tone, your eyes, Thanks, yo. really. Look, very you know hipster I mean? and cool. Need, yeah. I might need to keep this going. By the way, <laughs> but, by the way you're, you're not here for your health. You're here because you have a new single out. It's called Phases. Mm-hmm. Beautiful record. Thank you. From my, I've listened to it a couple times now. It's essentially about phases of life, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. And yeah. this idea that you can't stop and you got to keep going and you ro- rely on each other to get through it all. Exactly. How does this record start? Because it's different from the EP that yeah. you guys released a few months ago and then just wrapped up a tour that was all around that EP. Mm-hmm. What is the biggest difference in, in your brains? About the song? Yeah, between Phases and Ashley plus Evan. <laughs> right. I think it, it, it was kind of its own thing, but we were still in the studio while we were, you know, starting the show and doing all that kind of stuff so we were playing around with different ideas and we were working with different people and we were actually working on the song with uh rook monroe who did home with us as well and it kind of just had its own thing so we didn't really want it to be a part of the ep it felt kind of unique in its own sense like its you know own I mean? thing yeah yeah but it was like our favorite the entire time kind of like we like re- just really loved that song and I feel like it's a, and then it's we a did unique a little melody. tour together and we were playing it and it just like felt good really yeah. we we're definitely yeah we played it on the tour yeah. yeah was it the song that felt the most comfortable for you to perform no I mean god I mean I love all them but I think it was definitely a song that like I love I love the concept of it I think you know we all change and go through different things and like when you can have those constant relationships or you know, whatever it may be, that when you go through those, that you have someone to do that with. Is, yeah. You know, nice and I think film. the production has a cool vibe. It feels very like, uh, it's it's a unique sound, I think. You know, it's got a kind of unique, like, melodic sound that I, I to me is like my favorite kind of music. So it's cool to like, play with. I, and we have phases of the week, I feel like. You know, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like today, I am. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, I thought your EP was pretty unique too. I loved that EP and I love the production on it. You worked with an icon from uh, uh, Earth, Wind, and Fire. Verde White, yeah. Yeah, that yeah. was cool. Dude. Who I've been talking to still. Like, I talk to him almost every week. Yeah, he's great. Do you like check-ins? Do you, do he you check in, he, check, he, che- he checks in on me. And yeah, even time. when we were <laughs> rehearsing for a tour, That's he would good. come by and, and watch and check in. Yeah, he was, was taking notes cool. and yeah. giving us ideas and doing the whole thing. Yeah, he, he was such a, you know, and... Um, we did not expect him to do that, but he did, and he he's been a cool. part of it to the to, to that. I mean, he performed with us at the Roxy. Uh, yeah, what cool. a loving human being, man! Yeah, he's like, the best, yeah, real special human being. Does mm-hmm. that add any pressure to what you're doing, or to the fact that it needs to be successful? Like the fact that this guy is invested in the two of you and the music and the art you create and put out there. I don't know. Like, if that was me, I'd, I'd feel like, oh, it needs to perform. I don't want him to. Ju- <laughs> I don't want him to feel like he was wasted. Or- well, no. I mean, I think the performance part it definitely made us like step up while he was there. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I think the music in general. I think, uh, just, like, love. Yeah. No, I think 
in 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 the large scheme of things, it's like, you know, he 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 got a part of it because he liked the music. So we're we're kind of all in it together, you know. And he played on it and loved it, and that was just. We, it a was like a journey together. Experience, yeah. yeah. It's, I really, really, I'm. You were probably closer than before, but after you do that with somebody, oh, it's crazy. Definitely. Closer yeah. than close. And we had known each other. We weren't that close. We we would we kept bumping it to each other like at places like Mr. Childs and things like that. And I was like, oh my god. And then he had heard some music, and he was like, I, I want to work on some stuff with you guys. I was like, all right, <laughs> that sounds amazing. <laughs> you really can't say no to that. No, you can't. <laughs> so, I kind of know from doing research or maybe a couple different articles that were out regarding phases that you guys are planning next your solo projects yeah mm-hmm. correct me if i'm wrong is phases going to be the last record for now for now Ashley it, and Evan? Yeah, for now yeah. I mean, for sure but i feel like we'll always like make music together and that t- we had such a fun experience doing it together and I feel like we both are going to do yeah, our I mean, own albums. Yeah, we can make music together. We can always make music together. Yeah, you live together. You have a studio yeah. downstairs. Exactly. Just yeah. my heart. <laughs> we can make that part work. Yeah. <laughs> but I think it's it's a fun time now for us to focus on our solo stuff. We'll help each other out in the process. For but sure. It's, it's uh, yes. Yeah, I mean, that was kind of always the plan. Yeah. You know. Was the plan always to release phases as the in between between no. the EP? Because it no. kind of makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it definitely is our. It yeah. made sense. All of it, it does somehow sense. made sense. I don't know if all of it was planned. But <laughs> don't tell some, anyone. Yeah, but it's working out. But like, as you know planned. how things work out. Like they gotta just come together in a weird way. But yeah, it was. Yeah, the, I don't think it was as planned as we. Oh, made, sorry. Made my phone is ringing. It's okay. Hey, I'm. I'm my you got things. Her like, phone never is rings. Is it going to be my God. mom? Your phone's attached to a leash. <laughs> Jason Feltz. Jesus. Do you see the leash? Is lead? that who's calling? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tell Jason we say hello. My friend Jason. He's, he's been amazing. my friend for a long time, for like 20 years. He's but just... usually if my phone rings, it's like my mom or my best friend. My phone doesn't ring off the hook like yours does. <laughs> so I can't believe this just happened to me. <laughs> yeah, are, you, are, you, are, you, are you the cooler I'm a professional, one? though. I know my phone. <laughs> Evan's <though>. popular. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, hold on. Is Jason Feltz Kaboo? I don't, yes. What, oh, yes. Is that yeah. him? Okay. We know him. Yeah. 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 Good we job. just we just went he on a trip with him. He taught me how to drive. Wait, what the? F- oh my God! He's gonna be so mad about that because <laughs> every time somebody gets somebody introduces Jason that knows her family, they're like, "Yeah, she, they taught taught Ashley how to drive. Like that's he's all he's done, done a lot in his life. In his life. <laughs> he's done like a lot of. Cool, he's like, seriously, the only thing I've done is teach Ashley how to but drive. But listen, my parents, we have moved out here. We lived out here. We lived in Calabasas, yeah. and my parents took me to drive. They took me, and I, if you're not from here, then you maybe don't know. But Topanga Canyon. It's not. The it's really now. crazy <laughs> no. to take your kid to go learn how to drive. They took me down to Panga Canyon to the PCH, and I was like, okay, I'm not going to drive. I'm good. So my friend Jason <laughs> taught me how to drive in Calabasas on the nor- normal street. By the way, Jason Feltz, I'm pretty sure, is like a business partner with Richard Branson. Yes. yes. So the yeah. fact that you are his most, I don't know, uh, touted accomplishment. Yeah, yeah, there he, we go. He's, he's, he's not into it. He's like, that, that's the last time we're telling that story. Never he's very again. very accomplished. <laughs> <laughs> He's a good guy. Really yeah. nice and smart, dude. Amazing. Very, Brilliant. And yep. he throws a great festival. There you go. And we were in Coachella together this last time. But, so that's yeah. who you went with. Yeah. But you didn't even go to the actual show. You didn't but go you to said you were did. going for your first time, but you're going to go to the show. Yeah. I'm yeah. going to go to the show show. I got to like... Uh, go I've done the, the show desert. a bunch of times. Is it fun? Yeah, I, I loved it. But you got to be ready to be a part of the, you know, the dust. You know what I mean? You just got to... <laughs> the desert dust. You got to get your goggles out. Oh, no, no. Yeah. What are you saying? Yeah. <laughs> what are you saying? I mean, it depends if the wind's blowing, you know what I mean? But, like, it could be it could be quite interesting. I'm really afraid I'm going to get stranded there. Like, I don't have a place to stay yet, so I'm s- still oh, figuring no. that out. Like, find like You'll I, find a place to crash. I, I have this crazy, like, repetitive nightmare leading up to this weekend. It's like I'm at Coachella having a great time, and then it's, like, 4.30 in the morning, and it's just me in the <laughs> desert with nowhere to go. I actually, uh, I can't say the name of who it was, but we, we lost a friend in Coachella one time. Not yeah. their life, but <laughs> lost them. They fell asleep behind one of the, the food oh, trucks. No. <laughs> Too much and, heat and, and we couldn't find him. We literally were over the speakers in Coachella trying to find him. And someone had sent him home. Like, they, they put him in an Uber. <laughs> and he next day called us. He's like, I don't know. I'm in my bed. I don't know. <laughs> we had, like, a whole weekend left in Coachella. He was, he was home. <laughs> Oh, he had gone home. Yeah. yeah. And you know That's who I'm talking about, but I'm not going to say that. Oh, I do know. Yeah. Oh, I, I just hope... want to know who it was now. Yeah, yeah I know. I, yeah. I hope I encounter a kind stranger like that. <laughs> That's an expensive Uber bill. Well, one of my friends said they saw him, and he's known them forever, and he looked at him, acted like he didn't even know him, and just kept going. So. <laughs> 
He's like, hey, bro. He's like, no. No, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not alone. Want it. <laughs> no pictures. <laughs> okay. Phases is a single. You're going through a new phase of life now. Yeah. This is closing a chapter. Is that the right thing to say about what, like, this EP and your time making music together and releasing it? I mean, to a certain extent, maybe, but yeah. I, I mean, I don't think that's ever over. We're going to keep, you know, making music. But I think right now, yeah, we're going into a different phase. Definitely. Going into a different phase. I feel phase. like even for Look me, that. like, and I'm going to be super honest about that, too, is like, for me, it was like so nice getting back into music and being with my husband mm -hmm. and like just experiencing like such a loving moment. And yeah, now I'm going to go in and write and express where I'm at and that's where that's what I'm doing right now going like right now I'm doing guitar acoustic getting getting real and then it all yeah, become itself get it. but well, yeah you needed this right yeah, to, to feel comfortable in a studio again yeah Be, it makes sense I mean, right not necessarily in the studio but just being together and like being um you know even the tour really reminded me how much and like seeing like fans that have been around for that long like to come and like rock out to Lala and pieces of me and <laughs> Like, for me, that was such an amazing experience, and to get to have that with my husband was really cool. Do you feel like you could be more creatively vulnerable now, post doing this EP with Evan? Yeah, I mean, I definitely have been like, okay, that moment's coming for her. I'm going to be like, blah. So now I'm there. <laughs> Just stockpiling it's ideas? It's time, yeah. When was the last time you released your a solo album? It's been, oh, God, I mean, at least 10 years. Yeah. Are you nervous well, about Well, my son is 10, so, yeah, it's been 11 years. 11 years, years yeah. yeah. Yo, beautiful human, if you're ever stopped at a railway crossing and the signals are flashing and you don't see the train or it looks like it's moving slow and you're thinking maybe you can get across the tracks before the train comes, think about this. In 2018 alone, 270 people were killed at railroad crossings. 270. Stop. Trains can't. This message was paid for by NHTSA. Are you nervous about putting out solo music? No, I feel so good about it. And I feel like right now is the time for me to just kind of do exactly what I'm feeling and like express exactly that. So I feel I feel good about it. You know, I think now is such a different time in music to just really put that out there and it is. What, what, be yourself is really what. That's it. Yeah. Do you think that's the biggest difference between music today and the music and maybe pop music 11 years ago when you put your last album out? I mean, I was definitely being myself. <laughs> like, um, it is different, though. It's a different. It's such an interesting because it's such a different time with that, like yeah. being able to express yourself and and release music the way you can now. You know? Yeah, there's a different way you can release. There's a different, you know. I yeah. feel like there's so many choice. different ways you can release. There's things you could do an EP, you could do an album, you can yeah. do like you know random just, singles. Drop yeah, singles. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And okay, how many songs do you have done? I mean, I don't have anything done. I'm in the writing process right now. So. Got it. He's got more done than me, so he's ahead of me. <laughs> I am be done All next week best. I'm in the studio, though, so I'll be... <laughs> How are you picking producers? Um, I haven't done that. Right now I'm writing. Do I'm doing writing. Writing I'm alone? I'm going to write, just writing with a guitar player and a friend and just writing right now. Cool. Yeah. Get those get those. Deciding words before out. I choose producer, like what the words, concept, yeah. everything are first. So yeah. what do you learn from the first time doing your solo stuff? What do you learn from the first time doing your solo stuff that you take with you now during this I mean, second phase, <laughs> other phase of it all? Yeah, I mean, I think what you, I mean, for me, I was always very honest. Every day when I come in to write, it was something I was going through and whatnot. And so I feel like, yeah. you know, I've got 11 years of stuff I've been through. So I'm writing. <laughs> <about. laughs> it's a lot of There's to go through. There's a lot of stuff to go through. <laughs> That's like a, do you take notes as you go or do you just sit there and just, I don't know, unpack all of it? It's not going to be a Bible. But. It'll be a, like a 42 album, 42 no. song. <laughs> I'm just saying, like that that could be like a really intense week. Well, maybe it could be, maybe it could be like three albums. You know? Hey, people, well, there you go. I like Drake doing there two sides. There we go. Yeah, people want that though, and I think you know you guys hit the nail on the head in terms of how people consume music and the honesty that's in music. Like, look at Ariana Grande, right? Mm -hmm. She goes through all this stuff, and within two months, she has another album out. Within five months of her last album, right? It's, it's this. It's yeah. a lot of boyfriend talking there. It, 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 there's yeah. A, but it's open. It's honest. I like good. that. <laughs> and it's how she shares her life. No, but yeah. you know what though? It's interesting because I think a lot of people get that have those same experiences. So a lot of times it's like being able to really kind of connect with somebody on a deeper level because that's a you know love is a real thing. Like you know what I mean. And everybody in this situation in particular, everybody was hearing about her love life from so many different places except for her. 
right? Mm -hmm. So the music being the one way that she's going to... Express it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Rather than say it in an interview. It's a lot, yeah. In a tweet, in a whatever, to the album. It's cool. And I think the consumption rate is like, that's changed everything in terms of how people, how fast we go through music. Like, oh, oh yeah, the burn rate on records. Well, that's that's oh. that's the weird part, you know. Like, what like music it doesn't last very long. You know? It lasts like a week until the next Friday when everything else comes out. Mm-hmm. That's so weird. But, but it's you, cool because you get to keep going. But it going. also yeah. doesn't have to be that way. But it also do, takes a lot of the pressure away. Because <laughs> like if it's bad, yeah, you're like whatever. People again. forget about yeah. it. I'll do it another week. <laughs> next week. <laughs> this one was a this one was a bust. Let's do another one next. week. <laughs> you say you're way more ahead than Ashley on your solo project. You have records written? Yeah, I do. I don't know if I'm way more ahead. I think that um, y- y- I was kind of already knowing the the where I was trying to go with it already. You know what I mean? Because I had been kind of planning it out for a while, like the like the vibe that I was and the people that I wanted to work with and the vibes and things like that. So that that process started a little faster because I think also her coming from not putting out music in that long of a time, I think it's like, you know, this, this, it's gotta be, I mean, you know, she's gonna dive into some real, real crazy Yeah, shit. there's, <laughs> there's a lot there. A lot there. <laughs> but, is it, I was gonna say, is it hard though, for you going back and writing about a, something that happened in like 2011? I mean, it's not that I'm writing about that. I mean, I think it's just like kind of the woman that I've become from the experiences in my life and okay. those spaces Yeah, maybe not time. so specific. Yeah, 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 yeah. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. Whoa. It's, it's still a lot. Like, you still have a ton of experience and knowledge. <laughs> yeah. and it's crazy. I can't wait to hear it. I might learn some shit. <laughs> learn some yeah. secrets that you didn't know? Yeah, what? Like, what? <laughs> so, that happened? What sound <laughs> What sound are you going for? Are, are we talking live instruments on these records? Are there'll we be, soulful? There'll be, there'll be some live instruments. It's a, it's a, soul, it's a soulful album. But I'm going to be I'm gonna be working with a lot of the people that I... Um, that I look up to and that I think are really special and talented and, and I'm, I'm going to try to, I want to do something that feels different and has a kind of um, interesting, unique style. And I'm working with, I'm going to be working with the people that I'm, I'm fans of when in the work they're doing now and things like that. So it's, it's, it's going to, it's, it's a process, but it should be uh, interesting. You know, I'm, I, I really, I like what we're doing so far. It's like mm-hmm. a special <laughs> sound. Sounds good. Can you compare it to anything? I mean, I could compare it to a few different things, yeah, maybe. Um, but it's like it's it's pieces of all that stuff. Okay. Yeah. Is is it more vintage in sound, or is it more present? Present and vintage, but it's not. <laughs> it's, but it's not like li- it's not it's not a it. ton of live instrument. There's there's guitars, there's things like that. But it's uh, yeah. I mean, how how would I explain it? I don't know. It sounds. It sounds great. <laughs> I'm trying. To, I'm trying to think how to explain it. I'm gonna have to play some like stuff. it's your Please. album. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you, how, how many songs are done? Um, I would say that I'm for sure about about three, but we've got five songs that I think that are in the process cool. that we're writing right now. Yeah, are you gonna take those five and let that dictate the sound, and then go from there? Are you gonna put five out? You want to do three? I guess. No, I'm gonna do more. I'm gonna do more. Yeah, we'll, we'll, it'll be. You want a full al- album? Yeah, it'll be a full album. Wow. How do you guys write differently when you're like separate and together? You know what I mean? So like when you're writing, the I think we write a lot the same either, even either way, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we take turns kind of coming up with ideas. We'll get in the booth and we'll like sing melodies, you know. I feel like I like always have melodies, so I will go and play. Like I'm not a great piano player, but I play, you know, chords. Oh yeah, all so night. I can write to chords, and so I like I'm like, oh, I have a melody. Oh, <laughs> like, you know, she came so up with I a good song my... actually in Coachella. I did a really good one. Co- Coachella inspiration. Uh, I'm having good melodies right now. I'm yeah, I told about her. It. I'm taking, I, t- I told her. I said, I said that's a great song. I'm taking that one. <laughs> I said the, that one I'll take. And then, <laughs> I was like, so thank you for writing that. At least you, like, you, you wrote on my album, so I'm gonna take oh, that okay. one. <laughs> That's a part of, part of the marriage pack, right? Yeah, yeah I mean, you, I mean, That's I gotta get, be able to have first pick on one. How, how are you documenting all these melodies in your head? These inspirations? Do you do voice memos? Voice notes, yeah. Mm-hmm. That's the move. That's the move. <laughs> I don't know about the voice memo thing. I have way too many voice memos that, like, I feel like a lot of them is just becomes. I have no, to be in the studio. No, you kind of have to clean mm-hmm. them out and, like, really be real about which one was good and which one you're like, oh, my God, what, what was that idea? <laughs> yeah, they get lost. Yeah. You lost in translation? You have a few in and then the voice memo like I might have, like, real interesting. 3,000 <laughs> voice memos. But sometimes you're in the car and that's where you find your inspiration or whatever, you know, yeah. so I, I do think that those are great. 
you got to document. Yeah. Really, I have a thousand notes that I'll never go back and see. But the, if I didn't like write it down, I'd feel like I missed out on something great. Yeah. Yeah. One and, day you'll go. Well, through. I feel like there's only that's a few it. times where you know it was a great one, and that's when you have to be like, I have to go back and find that great one. Yeah. You look through it. Yeah, yeah. Or send it to somebody that will take the time to piece it all together properly. <laughs> well, no, then you need to go write it properly. No, no, you got to send it out to somebody that's right there. Like, I'm like, I'm going to put it down for you real quick. Do you need in the studio around you, like, unbiased people? Like, people who are, aren't are yes people? People are going to tell you whether it's good or not good or how to make it better. Like, is that on the list of things you look for in somebody you're going to work with? I think everybody somehow yeah, around us. Yeah, I don't us, think you want to be that. around yes people. We don't really have really that many yes mans. It's easy for you guys to have yes people, though. I mean, we love right? yes men sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> like, I look good, don't I? <laughs> I mean, right? Yeah, I mean, right? It's a balance. <laughs> look, maybe not this in the studio. This cool, right? Just, just for confidence. Before we walk in here right now, you look amazing. Okay, let's go. Let's get this. <laughs> Instead of a mirror, you just look at this one person. Like, why did you wear that today? You're like, I'm already walking into the interview. No, right I don't now. think we don't have yes people. Everyone's honest around us. Yeah, and maybe, I feel like when you're doing music, honest. you need honesty. And that's like the thing with any craft that you're working on. Like, I grew up being a dancer, whatever it is, you want to always be better and stretch to be better at whatever it is you're doing. So, you want to surround yourself around people that will help that. Build yeah, that even up if it doesn't feel good at the time. And, yeah. Are you guys yeah. honest try with Try things e- you don't try, and you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, Are we yeah. honest with each other? Yeah, are you guys honest with each other? Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really? Oh, yeah. They're married. Well, I know, but sometimes you don't want to, like, get on the bad side. I mean, or... if you were honest with each other. I think she'd rather get on the bad side. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> no. <laughs> no. No. You'd rather be like, yo. <laughs> I don't know. Just change that. If you not looking your best today. If you can't yeah, have I unfiltered just... honesty, right, you need that for this thing to survive. Yeah. I know nothing sure. about relationships, but I would assume that that's crucial. You said yeah, I know nothing. It no, it's true. It is. It is. It, is. it is. And especially when it comes to, like, work. I mean, the, the thing about it is, in the end of the day, we, we care about each other. We want we want the best for each other. So if the best for us is being honest about something that doesn't work or doesn't fit or you feel like truthfully isn't maybe the right move, then you, you want to be honest with that mm-hmm. person. Because in the end of the day they'll find out it wasn't good later on, right? Yeah, <laughs> you know? And then it's a bigger problem than us at home. All know? right, well, let's yeah. say Ashley has it. a new song, and she loves it. It's her favorite song. And right. you listen to it, and you're like, I don't know if I like it. Oh, he would tell me. I would, really? t- I would tell her, but I would be like, yo, at the end of the day, I but don't know everything. But at the end everything. of the day, if like, you defend yourself and you believe, like, he's so, like, I mean, if it comes to you, I'm like, God, he's got his own thing, and he, like, believes in that, and, you know, you... Yeah. I believe in him, so I feel like... No, but sometimes, yeah, sometimes it's But like, you would tell me if you didn't like a song, for sure. Yeah. I'd be like, it's probably not your fault. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you save it it's in the right way. It's not your fault, babe. <laughs> but I don't know everything. I'm sure somebody else came up with it. It would probably be my fault. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Like, I know that wasn't your idea. <laughs> <laughs> I know that wasn't you, but look, if you love it... That's funny. <laughs> And the end of the day, though, you don't know, like, like we don't really know, like, what people end up, what you, what you end up finding out is that what fans of people that love the music end up being drawn to sometimes is a song that you didn't love as much, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So a lot of times you're not really aware of what, you know, where the, where that or actual vibe is, the you song, know? Yeah. You, you got, all you got to do, you really got to just trust the fact that you like it, and you, if it's something you would listen to, then maybe people would like it too, but that's all you really got, right? Mm-hmm. It's you, it's your ears, and I guess it's the people you have around you. Yeah. And, and that's why, you know, with Phases, you performed it on tour, right? Before it came yeah. out officially or before it really mm-hmm. hit. Mm-hmm. You like being able to get the, that feel and that reaction from people to gauge yeah. an audience's vibe on a record? Well, we had played Definitely. Phases so much at home in general. And it was like all our friends was like, it was like their favorite songs. And we knew we wanted to release it. You know, we just had to figure out when it was going to happen. When that moment was. Yeah. Yeah. What what surprised you this last tour you went on? Anything? I mean, for me, I mean, for me, it was like also being together and getting to watch Evan too. Like we had our own moments, and in my moment, I would do. What surprised me was my fans that I hadn't seen in so long. Oh, they were wild, and that to me was. They would just sing her song louder than she was singing it with the mic. Unbelievable! Like, I, 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 it was I, I like, would be backstage, and here for and, me, and like, it was like reliving oh. this. Like it was like in a whole new way, and like everyone's like grown up, and it was just so fun. Like that was really cool. So you're doing pieces of me 
on tour. Well, yeah, 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 so, yeah, yeah. So basically, we, we would did do, our we did pieces. And we would I do, did pieces. I think we started with three L-O-V songs together. And Lala, yeah, started with three songs. Then she went into a medley of her songs that all her fans. Loved. And it's funny because now Jagger covers, knows a song and she and does this like backbend. She goes, "I'm doing mommy's move," and she like grabs <laughs> the mic and does a backbend. And like, yeah. Oh. yeah. But yeah, so her getting to know the songs and and be on tour with us was fun. Uh, our last show, show, Evan's mom was amazing. No, it was so funny. She came to the Roxy, but she was sitting back. She had brought her date was Diane von Furstenberg, and they were sitting in they were sitting in the back, right? And and she was like, I don't want to sit back here. It's not, I'm not close enough. So she's like, you know, it's so crazy. I started walking, and the people just moved out the way. I got right to the front of the stage. I was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course they did. They're like, they're like what's I happening right now? Right. And so she, but she was in the front of the stage the entire show, oh which oh made me nervous. Cause and it was, was so cool because I feel like the people, like she was even there when I was having no, my everybody moment. was, I was so singing L O V and La La, and they're like that, and she was like right there. She was jamming. And then Yo. when Evan went to do his, but I did, songs, I did these songs, the songs I was doing. I was like, the problem is a lot of these songs are kind of like loving and sexual, and I was trying to make sure I was looking at her too, but it was just. The whole thing was very interesting, but it was very exciting. She was amazing. She's your number one fan. She is, best. and she made me cry. Yeah. I was like crying, but she was, oh, yeah, it was amazing. It was very cool. I, I'm surprised, like you pulled through. Like, yeah, I had a moment there. There was a, it was a hard, it was a moment where I was trying to, yeah, it was, it was, it was an emotional moment, and I, it took me a lot. It's one of the people in my life that um, is, uh, you know, it matters a lot to me, you know, when it comes to me singing and all this in front of her. You know, it, it took me a long time for me to even show her that part be, just because of, you know, I grew that's what, like, that's what inspired me. I grew up watching that, you know. It, there's, un, it, understandable why it took you so long to sing in front of her and release your music. Yeah. And I don't know, that's really special to have your mom out there supporting you oh that God, way. Oh my gosh, she was mm-hmm. just jamming, you know. It's amazing. You can't beat it. Do you, I mean, I don't know, like, in that moment, does that push you to do more to keep going yeah of course yeah what because do you feel like there's a part of you that needs to keep going because it's so intertwined into not just your dna Mm -hmm. but to the in the dna of your family no it is yeah and i and you know i have other siblings that sing but but it's it's uh yeah it is and i feel like she's always known that that was something that was so important to me and i feel like it is it is an important thing to do and and I yeah no I do I think that is that's a lot of what it is. How long were you making music before you decided to show her? I've been making, but she she knew though. Like I would come perform on stage with her once in a while. Like and I and I uh, yeah I mean she knew. We she saw knew. at Coachella Joe the other day and Evan's like oh, I used to sing this song all the time. Right? Didn't you say you did a performance of a Joe? Song? No, I never did a Joe performance. Oh man, I thought you did a Joe song. <laughs> I got the story wrong. <laughs> <laughs> no, never did. Never did a joke. Did pu- you do one for your mom? What never, it? never. Stevie Wonder, I sang. Okay, I, step, I sang. Over, I sang overjoyed in like uh, Greenwich, Connecticut. She did a performance before we moved okay, away. Yeah. No, but yeah, she's she's known that for a long time. I got that story. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how you got Joe. I mean, I love Joe. I wouldn't know what happened. What happened was I was in Coachella and I realized that Roxy. <laughs> was with Joe, the singer Joe, and I, and I saw him, but I was like, is that Joe? But like, like I was like, oh shit. Like, I grew up listening to Joe my whole life, so I was like, I had a geek moment. I was like, dude, I was like, I grew up singing your songs. Do like, you talk to him? In front of my mirror. <laughs> yeah, I told him. I was like, I've been... Oh, there you go. He's in like, front of really? his mirror, yeah. not in front of his mom. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Close enough. The one I'm not sing- <laughs> Can you imagine me singing those no. sexual songs to my mom? <laughs> My mom would be like, I got the story wrong, okay? <laughs> Just thumbs up. Yeah. Keep going. Go ahead, good to your thing. <laughs> yeah, that was Jesus. that was I sang overjoyed from Stevie Wonder, yeah. By the way, I, the the visual of your your mom and D V F in in the audience at the rock. I know, right? It's great. Really oh, fun. it's super Amazing. great. Yeah, Diane von Furstenberg rocking the rap dress. Yeah. She was killing it. They used mm-hmm. to they used to hang like well they do now, but they used to like I think like Paris Studio 54 like they have some interesting stories I, c- oh. I can only imagine 
Yeah. Two truly iconic yeah. individuals, living legends. I mean, maybe you don't know, but DVF changed the fashion world for mm -hmm. women. And she pretty, I'm almost positive she created the wrap dress. Like that oh, was yeah. her 100%, thing. Oh, yeah. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. The fact that you know that, yeah. It's a good I know. Uh, high, five. high five. High five. <laughs> I really like her. And I know uh, she has a daughter and a granddaughter, and they're mm -hmm. all keeping it going. Um, that's just spectacular. Uh, by the way, the other thing I, I think about, not too, too often, but it, it's come up a few times since the first time we met, was the uh, the story of you getting dropped off in a limo every day uh -huh. and that being one of the, the ways you realized how different you were from everybody else. Well, well it was the limo. Was, it was all, we changed that because I was like, this is embarrassing. <laughs> um, By the way, in 2019, if a kid had an option to take a limo oh, to now school it changes. every day, not, they'd be Instagramming it. Yeah, but when you, when you when, <laughs> totally. like, our era it was not dope at all. Like, you were not cool. Like, you, like, you, you. There was nothing edgy about you. Why are you? <laughs> You're a flashy loser. Yeah, exactly. And and we so we stopped the limo, but that it was like this old link. It's, it's such a funny story, but um, it was that. And then I remember like mom coming into school and teachers were just like acting so different. I'm like, you guys are not this nice. Like, <laughs> what is happening? Why are you guys changing right now? So that you know, is it weird now when you go to your kids' schools, or is it different in LA? No, we're in LA. Everybody, no. I mean, yeah. like, they're like, oh. You should move to Wisconsin. <laughs> You'd be huge there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Your kids could do nothing wrong. No, they don't. In LA, I don't think anybody cares much. No. And is it like nobody? Like, I guess in New York too, it's a little bit different. You know, if you got some celebrity parents around there, a lot of the uh, the kids' parents want to be friends. And yeah, yeah, no, it's not like that at all. Here, no, mm -mm. nobody no. planning play dates just to get into your zone, pitch oh, you an idea. Or, no. Really? Maybe we're that. just not the coolest of all the parents. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's a light. You might not be. I don't I know. I think at Bronx is cool, No, it's though. actually cool. cool. Like, yeah, I feel like we've actually seen young. a lot of our friends, like, have, you know, kids in our class. And, yeah, it's actually my friends are in the yeah. class. You know? I think Bronx's friends think I'm cool because I'm young. They do. <laughs> <laughs> and all my friends are fun. My friends come over and hang out with everybody. Yeah. Basketball. Yeah. You look so accomplished right now. I'm so <laughs> happy like, for you. Think <laughs> I'm no, cool. it is. No, it is. And they, no, they do. And it, it, it's like, you know, they're like, you're not that old. I'm like, I know. His 10 year old friends. <laughs> <laughs> you do look young. I get into the gossip. Yeah, I start it. talking about the gossip. What yeah. happened here today? You spill tea, you know? He's yeah, I know what's going cool. on. I know what's going on, like, really going on in the school right uh. now. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> do we have a date yet on your solo project? No, but I'm I'm trying to get it done um, as soon as possible. Well, not as soon as possible, but in a timely fashion because I'm I'm gonna start doing a Lee da this Lee Daniels project coming up soon. Whoa, um, a and movie? Then, yeah, uh, which I'm not supposed to go into, but I, I don't know. Fine. Maybe I probably could, but I don't know. But um, yeah, so that and uh, so I want to also get this. I, I really want to spend this time now and really focus on getting it where it should be, so that I can be in the process of you know releasing it while we're in the process of the other stuff. Cool. Mm -hmm. by, by the way, that like that low key Lee Daniels mention. Well, Lee Daniels is we'll <laughs> amazing. It, we'll keep it low key, but it's so not low key. Like <laughs> it's it, he, he's amazing. Yeah, he, yeah. You know, he's a visionary, and I've been like we've become such great friends since we did Star together and everything. So now we're like you know, I just think he's an extremely special dude. I want to do a lot of different projects with him. Mm -hmm. Cool. Is that like is that a creative challenge for you, or do you feel like you're meant to take on an acting role? Like what comes easier? Um, I started doing acting first, so it's, you know, that's, that's a, yeah, I don't know, it, it does, that comes, it, I don't know if any of it's easy, but it is something that I'm, I'm used to doing, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um, movies and things like that, but I think the, the music thing, so, it, I think it's harder only because in some, some kind of way, you're, well, in a lot of ways, you're giving yourself to the world, mm -hmm. and I think that's different. I think, you know, playing a character, you know, there's pieces of you, but you get to, you know, you get to kind of pretend and, and, and play in a character but you know when you're telling your own story it's it's, it's a lot more writing on it sometimes it's different you know? but there's a lot of actors who have turned to music or went to music then went to acting and then have the ability Usually the to write way. yeah it, but then they write songs about other people right they have this like weird <laughs> thing where they can take their sh themselves out of their shoes well i want to do right. that though that's a Fiction. lot a lot of that i want to do too because i feel like it can't just be always about just me and being fully in love with my wife it also has to be about <laughs> the diff the different things I love that, my wife. the different things that happen in life yeah. you know and how how different relationships and things unfold and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah. I mean, that makes sense, too. It's like, it's cool. It's, uh, you know, 
storytelling beyond like yeah but but they're both different forms of storytelling it's really it's special but one is super personal yeah, yeah. i agree scary giving yourself a hundred percent yourself out there but the, now it's your phone? Oh, I'm like, that was me not, this time. Oh, we're, we're both Look guilty. Who's popular now? <laughs> who's calling you? Why is no one calling me? What is happening? I don't yeah, know who this is. this is a rare moment, guys. Wow. Evan's not the popular one in the room. It's just us. <laughs> oh, no, I got, I got some messages. Oh, okay. <laughs> just got to prove the point. Like, I'm cool, too. Oh, I got a notification from Tinder. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> and from 7-Eleven. Uh-oh. <laughs> That's hilarious. They're, they're, they're having a sale on taquitos. <laughs> I love them. Um, Faze is the single. It deserves everybody's ear. Listen, listen, listen. Do it. It's a beautiful, beautiful record. Thank seriously. You. And the the best way to compliment Ashley, is it Ashley plus Evan? Evan plus Ashley? It's probably Ashley first. Evan, Evan and Ashley. Yeah. Ashley and Evan. Evan it's, and Ashley. It's not a man's world. <laughs> Amen. Ashley plus Evan. That EP, if you haven't listened, deserves your ear as well. Why, you know, we look at everything going on right now. Mm -hmm. There's so much nostalgia coming back. Right. You look at the Jonas Brothers reuniting. Yeah. A lot of people either releasing music or going back and we're taking old movies and we're reworking all of them. Mm -hmm. Is there something? I, the question is why now? We're becoming vintage. It's cool now. <laughs> it is. <laughs> I mean, it right? is cool. And our vintage is like not that vintage. No, no, no I'm not. I mean, <laughs> mine, mine might be becoming it. I think. I don't. I, I don't know. I don't. I think pretty sure. Pieces of me is close, though. I think pieces of me is definitely close. Yeah, and Lala, yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah. yeah. I mean, gosh, it's been so long. I, I say that was. With love. Lala's my favorite. No, I'm happy about that. That's a good one. Yeah. And those songs I'm so proud of, and I'm so proud. I mean, that's the fun thing is like now, even our kids hearing them, and they don't know those songs. They hear what's on the radio and then liking that and showing their friends, and that's cool. It's vintage. <laughs> Which could be why there's a resurgence in bringing back pieces of our past, right? Right. Like, because there's now officially like two generations. Mm -hmm. Who have not been able to experience pieces of me or songs like Burning Up from the Jonas Brothers. <laughs> right. Like they, they, there's a whole new opportunity mm -hmm. to keep that creative story and that creative life going. Mm -hmm. They re re released that? Oh, they, yeah, they're they covering them at every show. Oh, there you go. No re release. But they have a new song. Dope. They mm -hmm. put a song out together. Yeah, too. Mm -hmm. Oh, nuts. No, but they're also doing that song. Well, yeah, because yeah, yeah. they're on tour. Like how they're doing you... Love Bug, uh, all of their old stuff. Mm -hmm. That's dope. It's pretty cool. Yeah. I just, I don't know, I, I think it's, for me, as somebody who grew up pieces and, right. you know, all of the Jonas Brothers stuff, it's part of me that loves it, and I love being able to, like, play a record from them right, again right, yeah. that's not at a, a, a middle school dance that I used to DJ. There you go. Pieces, <laughs> huge hit. Yeah, just saying. There we go. <laughs> really, people loved love it. it. Yeah. Um, so, I don't know. The, the question I'm trying to, to ask here, I guess, is... When you're creating your new sound, or you're in the process of it now... Mm -hmm. Is there a part of you that wants to keep what was and then bring it into what is going to be so people know that it's still you? Um, I mean, I definitely think there is an aspect. I'm not trying to keep what it was because I feel like it's a different you know, place. But I think where I'm coming from as a, a writing, it's definitely you're going to feel those moments, yeah. but it's not going to be what it was. It'll be what it is now, but you might feel some of those elements. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I Sorry, I'm just hearing pieces in my head. Yeah. <laughs> it's on repeat, man. Yeah. Timeless no, but record. If, if you feel those moments, I mean, that was me, and then it'll be me now. And so, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure you'll get a lot of those vibes. You're going to get some vibes of it, for sure. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Can you answer this question for me? And then, uh, I know you have thoughts. Why aren't people putting live instruments on records anymore? Mm. I don't know. Um... Maybe because it's easier. No one knows how to play live instruments. I mean, I think that's a... <laughs> that's a terrible way out. That's not. You know, but no, it is. But I think that there's... Um, I don't... I, there is a sound out right now. I think it's always good to add live instruments. I think because... Even when there's that sound, it's nice to have it. Yeah. It brings... I, I feel like I need it in, in mm -hmm. songs. Even even if it's not the entire song, that you hear those those real live instruments. You know, I've played songs, I've played literally songs even from my mom and other people that I've grown up around without the live instruments. And it's, it, I think they sound really good. And my mom's like, I don't, I don't get it. I don't know. It yeah. doesn't hit you the same. Like, what are you going to write about? Like, you know, mm -hmm. I guess it's, you know? She, she grew up at a different time. Yeah. Created But like time. production tells a story, you know? It, it does. So do you not need live instruments to tell that story? I think sometimes, I think it, it, I think it helps. 
I like when songs start out stripped down, and that's when you Me write too. That's and then, and then you could build on it as much as you want. But when there's mm-hmm. already all that happening, then you no... can't even decide where you want it to well, go. It's or, already or, there. Or there's only it's, more. Yeah there's, yeah, there's one way to go, and that's it. Yeah. yeah. Do you think there's like a? <gasps> Oh my God! You're getting a call. <laughs> Congratulations! Who is it? It's my mom. <gasps> there you go. <laughs> you, can, you can answer it because she's way more important than everybody in this room right now. And I'd say that even if she wasn't Diana Ross. <laughs> mom, I'm in an interview. <laughs> <laughs> you look like me after I talk to my mom. <laughs> I don't even know what the what was happening. I'm about to be in trouble. No, I'm Are, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Question. You know your mom obviously very well. You know what she's done. And I always think back to like her generation of artists, whether it's her or Aretha. Or, I mean, all of the, all of these incredible vocalists within that generation who really kind of, I don't know, laid the path for what incredible vocals and pop music would be. Mm-hmm. Does that exist today? Like, is there anybody that you've heard and you go, oh, that's the voice of somebody who could be the next Diana Ross, the next Aretha? Does that exist? Yeah, I think I think I mean, I don't know, man. There's talent everywhere, so maybe, I'm sure, you know. I think there's talent everywhere. I don't know if it's the same as it is now cuz there's so many there's so, so much, so much yeah. out there, there's you know. A lot. I think at the time it was there was very few, you know. And they were so special. And it was so hard to break into the industry because I mean, it just was that time. I mean, you know. It wasn't accessible. No. You had to have talent. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> but there's so many talented people out there. I think it takes a lot more than almost talent sometimes too. It's like you've got to have that thing. It's that the thing. Everything. Yeah. Like Etta James. I've been hearing a lot of stories about her recently. She's and, phenomenal. Uh, yes, obviously the most inc- an incredible singer. The emotion she puts into every lyric, unreal. And in moments where she was dark, those dark moments were matched by incredible moments where she was so light. And she was the center of attention. She walked into a room and she just. She filled it with something mm-hmm. that was so different. You've said that in our last conversation mm-hmm. about your mom. Yeah. So when you say that special something, it is. Yeah. It's real. You don't even know what it is, but you don't know it until you're around yeah, it. Yeah, it's special. Yeah. We just had our birthday, and it was like really it was something amazing. Else. And everybody came out to show. Even you know Stevie came and performed, and we got to perform with her. Yeah, it was so well, cool. Any nerves? Like be, yeah. again, like yeah. beyond D- Diana Ross, <laughs> it's yeah. your mother-in-law. <laughs> Definitely. It freaked me out. But she is also the most amazing mother-in-law ever. But yeah, definitely nerves, but it was so fun. Crazy. We did love Hangover with her. We it was did. Super fun. <laughs> it's like really bonding. For, yeah. No, it was amazing. And, and 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 Puff came out and did I'm Coming Out. Um, Puff, heard of him? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, and, and uh, Robert Thicke sang uh, mm-hmm. Endless Love you do with great. her. Wow. This is one hell of a party. And DJ yeah. Khaled came out. They did All I Do Is Win. <laughs> what? Jeez. Yeah, it was it was kind of spectacular. It was really something special. It was such a, it was a fun event. Mm-hmm. Celebration of life and music. Yeah, yeah. She, just, she, she, she put it together. So she got to talk to all her fans and do it the way she wanted to do it. And she talked about how the fact that, you know, a lot of this, the majority of the songs she did were songs that were written by other amazing artists. And she, she was shining light on those writers during that time. Lou Dozier Holland and all that wow. and uh, and you know how it was more about her telling a story and, and being a storyteller yeah, yeah it's great yeah. do they make artists like that anymore <laughs> uh, oh, oh, let's hope so <laughs> knock on wood yeah mm-hmm. final thought well I have two questions they both kind of tie in the first one is like you both come from very successful families do you care that people ask you about it all the time or does that kind of get old and annoying I mean I think it's we, we expect it <laughs> so no it's not and also like I love my sister I don't mind talking about her. <laughs> but yeah. I know, like, but sometimes you go to promote your music and people are like, how's your sister's baby? Um, like, no, that doesn't annoy me. Okay. I mean, I, I think, you know, I've grown up with that. And that's my sister and that's something for people to talk about. And yeah. And her baby's great, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, she's adorable. <laughs> Rude for you not to ask. <laughs> and by the way, you didn't ask me, but the baby's doing great. <laughs> and the but other question is. was, uh, Evan. You posted a photo of Michael Jackson recently. Mm-hmm. What? How do you feel about everything that's happening? Um, about the whole thing? Yeah, like everything, the documentary and all. Everything. Yeah, I think it's too bad that people decide to put things out without having proper facts about anything. You know, mm-hmm. I think nowadays it's it. You know, it's a little bit of a scary time where you can say whatever and um, and it, it, you know, people latch onto it without having you know any kind of facts and things. You know. 
then people and, just... and my, my thing is in the same respect like you know for victims in general out there that are actual victims you know i sympathize a thousand percent but i think in general i think there's a reason why we have a system and we have a system that you know proves people guilty a judicial system and if there's if that's not if that's not what it is then it's really hard to you know how do you judge can... anything mm -hmm. someone can say something about anybody that's you know? true we put a lot of faith and trust into the justice system to be mm. able to provide a fair and accurate verdict and yeah. allow them to literally be the judge. Yeah, I but I, I love I love Michael with all my heart. He was like he's godfather to me, and I'm best friends with his children, Paris, and everything. And I, I've known him my whole life, and I think he's a phenomenal, amazing human being that has done such incredible things for children and mm. people that need help and 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 given probably more than I think probably any single celebrity there so mm -hmm. yeah cool how do you how do you get that out there how do you how do you remember him the proper way well you just you you hopefully hope that people you know get the right message and do because it, yeah I mean through his music through everything I mean he's yeah he changed the world changed the world a thousand percent so you think it's fair that like radio stations are not playing his music or not supporting him anymore I just think it's up to me. It's my opinion. I think it's a little strange because without, I mean, again, it's it's somebody just saying something. I, like, it's hard to like judge that. Like, you you can't just you know. And they've already shown that a lot of the facts aren't yeah. proper. So mm -hmm. it's like you know, I don't know. I think it's hard to just be like, yeah, okay, someone said something. Let's tarnish their entire but, career. And <laughs> like you said, twenty nineteen, it's the court of public opinion more than the court of mm -hmm. actual sort of fact and balance. Mm -hmm. You know, there's. It's not really a justice system. Yeah. It's a social media system. Yeah. And I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't know. 2019. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's really the best way to sum it up. Yeah. Ashley and Evan, I love the both of you deeply. You guys are yeah, freaking great. Yeah. Thank you Thanks so for much. having Thanks for coming in again. Thanks for sharing your energy. And thank and you. And we'll be back. Of course. Of course. But maybe alone. But we'll be, I'll sit over there. And <laughs> he'll sit over there. <laughs> and then we'll swap. We'll be back here. We'll still be here together. <laughs> I'll pop up from the there back. <laughs> just, can I just pop up? Yeah, just, hey! <laughs> <laughs> Phases deserves your ear. It's a really great record. And beyond excited and beyond ready to freaking support your solo projects. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, as always, for coming and hanging out. Thank you guys you. are great. Ashley Woo. and Evan, everybody. Yay! Right. <laughs> I really hope you enjoyed that conversation. If you did, please subscribe and also check out our podcast. There's a link in the description and also comment and like and do things. Other interviews are on the screen somewhere. So click them. Thanks for watching.